All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Study Hall. Uh, today we're going to be hearing from Topher on WordCamp Crazy, Leveraging WordPress for World Peace. Topher is a WordPress developer from Grand Rapids, Michigan, where he lives with his wife, daughters, and two little dogs. Thank you, Topher. Take it away. Thank you very much. Um, Has anybody never heard of Word, or, uh, Hero Press? Hero Press. Have you ever never heard of it? Okay, so uh, a few years ago, I started. I tried to start a commercial company called Hero Press, that was going to be like TED, where people would do video talks, and it was intended for uh, people on the fringes of WordPress, people who live a thousand miles from the nearest meetup, to speak to other people like them. Um, a young man came to me from India and said, "How do I get good contracts?" I said, I don't know, I'm not in India, I don't know business. So I found him somebody else in India. And they spoke to each other and it was, it was great. As a commercial company, that failed. I didn't get the funding and it just, that didn't work out. So instead I turned it into a, a blog style. And so if you go to heropress.com today, you will see essays from people writing to their peers about the successes that WordPress provided to them the opportunities that WordPress is, provides to them. I've been doing this for several years now, and over those years, I've gotten to know a lot of people from all over the world. Um, I Like, more countries than I knew existed. I know people all over the place, and we're good friends. We get on Slack, we chat, we talk for hours, and I learn things about their culture and their life and things like that. And the ideas for this talk came from all those experiences, all those interactions. How many people know where Pakistan came from? All right, good. I have a little bit of information here I want to read to you from Wikipedia. The partition of India in 1947 eventually accompanied the creation of two independent dominions, India and Pakistan. The Dominion of India became, as of 1950, the Republic of India. And the common, oh, I'm sorry, the Dominion of Pakistan became, as of 1956, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. The partition displaced over 14 million people along religious lines, creating overwhelming refugee crises in the newly constituted dominions. There was large-scale violence with estimates of loss of life accompanying or preceding the partition disrupted and varying between several hundred thousand and two million. The violent nature of the partition created an atmosphere of hostility and suspicion between India and Pakistan that plagues their relationship to the present. When this happened, there is, there is a river that, that is the border between West Pakistan and India. And there was a farmer who, his, his farm bordered that river. And when the day came that the new Pakistanis were coming for his farm, the family ran out of the house and ran down to the river and started climbing into their boat. And as he was pushing the boat into the river, the Pakistanis showed up and shot him in the back. And he stayed there, dead in the water, while the boat went on without him. And his children in that boat grew up in Punjab, in the north of India. And their, one of their children moved to Grand Rapids, Michigan, and runs a liquor store across the street from my house. And he is a firm believer that Gandhi was a criminal and a traitor because he gave up his grandfather's farm. He just gave it away. And I talked to my other friends in India, and they're like, really? Somebody thinks Gandhi is a not a good, not a good guy? Well, all of those people that lived up in, in West Pakistan who were not Muslims and had to run are not very fond of Gandhi. Something interesting that happened when they split is you ended up with East and West Pakistan, two separate areas, culturally quite different. 
the people in East Pakistan uh, are Bengali. People in West Pakistan uh, are Urdu. Urdu. In, let's see, is the date on here? Yes, in 1971, there was a national election. And the guy from East Pakistan, the Bengali guy, won by a landslide. Huge. No question. The military in West Pakistan said, no, we will not accept that leader and deposed him and put their own in place. So the people from East Pakistan said, fine, we're leaving. And Pakistan, West Pakistan said, oh, no, you're not. And so they went to war. And I have this from uh, Wikipedia. <clears throat> The genocide in Bangladesh began on 26 March 1971 with the launch of Operation Searchlight as West Pakistan began a military crackdown on the eastern wing of the nation to suppress Bengali calls for self-determination rights. During the nine-month-long Bangladeshi War for Independence, members of the Pakistani military and supporting Islamic militias killed up to three million people. Nine months, three million people. That's half the Holocaust. People in Bangladesh do not like Pakistan. They struggle to talk about Pakistan. They struggle to be in the same room with people from Pakistan. Uh-oh. There we go. Several years ago, the, the year the Hero Press started, I was at WordCamp Miami. And I was walking across the lawn from one building to another. And this guy walks up to me. And he says, are you Topher? I said, yeah. And he stuck out his hand. He said, I've come here from Pakistan to shake your hand. I said, what? Why would you come to Miami from Pakistan to shake my hand? And he said, because of Hero Press. Because of that project I started, because he saw somebody like him on Hero Press, and that changed his life. Now, he had other reasons. He didn't just come to see me. You don't just, I mean, that's, that's a big trip. Um, but he's from Pakistan. While he was there, he met this guy. Get my mouse off there. Asif. Asif is from Bangladesh. As you may recall, Bangladeshis don't like Pakistanis. Muhammad did not know that. In Pakistan, they don't talk about the war because they lost. They lost hard. During that war, they also attacked India at the same time. India didn't put up with it. it and that was what is now known as the shortest war in all of history. It was 13 days. Um... So that was, 71 was a bad year for Pakistan. They don't teach about it in schools. They don't talk about it. Nobody knows. The old people know, they don't, but they don't talk about it. So he was, Muhammad was floored when Asif didn't want to shake his hand. He didn't want to talk to him. He didn't want to be in the same room with him. But Asif did it anyway. He sat down with him and they talked and they spent the entire afternoon sitting on a bench at WordCamp Miami, talking about their countries and their people and their history and all of that stuff. <clears throat> and within about three months, they had formed a company together. And they sell a WordPress plugin called uh, Analytify, which puts Google Analytics right in your dashboard. Asif has been to Pakistan. Muhammad has been to Bangladesh. Muhammad's dad wants to go visit Bangladesh because of his relationship with Asif. That one afternoon, because of WordPress, that one afternoon changed these two guys' lives. Now, in 2018, Asif went to a lot of WordCamps. 
He's doing pretty well financially. He actually retired. Uh, he retired on his 30th birthday. Uh, that was his goal, to use WordPress to retire. And, and it worked. So in 2018, he went on a lot of uh, WordCamp trips. And he published his itinerary. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a bit of a cold. Um, he published his itinerary and said, anybody who wants to go with me, let's go. And he formed a WordPress group called WordCamp Crazy, which is why this talk is called that. And several men from Pakistan, Bangladesh, and India started traveling together to WordCamps. And they didn't just stay near each other and they didn't just hang out. They stayed in hostels together. They were all sleeping in the same room, staring into the night, talking about weddings and kids and dogs and houses and all the things people talk about in the night. You may recall India and Pakistan don't like each other very much either. <laughs> but these guys, their group grows more and more every year. They are learning to be friends, to love each other, to care about each other. They, they stay in touch. They find out, can I help you? How's business? You know, how's your mom? Those things. And they are changing the landscape of the whole India, Pakistan, Bangladesh world. Now, it's a small group. They're not, they're not going to change anybody's government right now. That's not going to happen. But their kids might. Their kids are going to know each other. They're all going to know all of them. WordPress has an existing worldwide network of people with a common interest that cuts across every cultural, religious, political, and financial barrier. If you were to try to find, like, if you want world peace, you're going to have to find some commonality. And we all have commonalities. Everybody's got kids. You get two parents in the same room, it doesn't matter what culture they're going to come from, they're going to talk about their kids. But if you want to if you want to extend that, you need to find more commonalities. This one sprang into being. Nobody said, let's make a worldwide thing that everybody knows about and agrees with. It just happened. There are word camps everywhere. There are meetups in every country. So this thing exists. What can we do with it? We could build websites. We could make companies. But a question I have asked myself, and I do not have an answer, is do we have a moral responsibility to leverage this network for good? Um, you don't have to. I don't have to. I don't have to get on Slack and find somebody from Nigeria and say, hi, I'm Topher. But what if I did? What if I did that every week, a new person every week? And I start to get to know these people everywhere. Uh, there's a man in Germany named Kasper. Kasper Hubinger, I think, I hope. He's probably going to watch this later. Sorry, Kasper. Um, he, last year, two years ago, he went to WordCamp Harara in Zimbabwe. So I don't know if you knew this, but traditionally, in order to have a WordCamp, you must have a meetup that meets every month for a year. And then you can say, okay, look, we have this thing, we can do a WordCamp now. Well, once upon a time in Italy, by accident, sort of, they had a meetup, or they had a WordCamp, and it created a meetup. And people said, hey, well, maybe we, we, we need to reverse this. So they started a program where they took five cities in the world, and they just did a WordCamp. Just, let's just do it and see what happens. And sure enough, it worked. Meetups sprang up. Well, Harara was one of them in Zimbabwe. They did not have a meetup. There was nothing going on. There was just a couple of people who knew WordPress. So they did a WordCamp. Kaspar went, and he spoke. He worked for WP Rocket, which was a caching plugin, and he was going to teach the Africans about how to speed up websites. And he got there and found out that they are light years ahead of us because they all access the Internet on Cheap, slow devices, and it's very expensive. 
they know how to speed it up. They know how to cut corners, how to, how to cheat the system to get more data for less time. So he had to change his whole thing. And he met people and they changed his life and he made friends. And while he was there, uh, a woman unrelated to the whole process uh, was arrested because she made a tweet about the president. The week after he left, <clears throat> they overthrew their president. Anybody remember his name? He'd been a dictator for 40 years. 40 years. Zimbabwe is one of the poorest countries in the world because of this guy. And the week after Casper left, the government came down. And much of the WordPress world paid attention because there had just been a WordCamp. And everybody said, are you guys okay? There's, I don't know, 10 or 15 people, WordPressers there. And people from all over the world sent them emails and said, are you okay? How can I help you? Do you need money? Do you need to get out of the country? Do you, well, what do you need? And they were like, wow, who are you people? <laughs> and where have you been all this time? Um, so, like, it, it changed the people who went there, it changed the people who lived there, and now everybody's life is different for the rest of their lives. And I was thinking, WordPress had nothing to do with that government change. It had nothing to do with the new guy. It will probably have nothing to do with the next president after the current one. But that third one's maybe 10, 15 years away. Maybe it's somebody from a WordPress meetup who's going to be president, who's going to have hundreds of friends around the world to speak sanity to him, to say, this is how the world operates. The world cares about you. We're not indifferent. You matter. You're my friend. I'd like to help you run your country. I'd like to give you advice, whatever. I don't think WordPress is going to change world governments today, and maybe not in the next five years or 10 years, but maybe 15 years. What if you happen to make friends with somebody in Central Europe who someday becomes a cabinet minister or president or something, and that person is is changed because of our community, because of the care and love that we show to the world. That it blows my mind that that's even a possibility. Um, because of Hero Press, I seek people out all the time because I want them to do essays. Um, but now I know that that's easy, easy to do. It's really easy to find people from other countries. Um, in fact, if you go to translate.wordpress.org, you will see a list of every country or every language in the world. So hundreds and thousands of them. And with, for each language, there is an owner, somebody who's in charge of translating WordPress into that language. And there's their email address and their Slack handle. Look them up. Say, hey, I'm, I'm Topher. What do you do? What's your job? Are you married? Do you got kids? Just make friends. Just, just be friends. There's, not, there's nothing else to it. I got this picture just the other day. I was talking to my friend Aditya, who lives in Pune, Pune India. He said, hey, did you see that picture of the Pakistani, the Bangladeshi, the Indian... And what was the other one? What's up there? Uh, what's that? Uh, I don't remember the other flag. Anyway, these four guys are all from different countries. I don't know them. They're not part of We're Camp Crazy. They're just four guys. <clears throat> oh, Nepal. This was in Nepal. So one of those guys is Nepali. Um, they all got together for a picture. 
because they love WordPress. Their countries didn't matter. Their histories didn't matter. And so now they're all friends. And they talk to each other. And they, they share culture. They, they change the landscape of the world because of WordPress. And that is the end of my talk. Um, thank you. <laughs> my pitch, my request, is that you go make friends with people all over the world. Just look them up and say hi. How are you? Stick your hand out virtually. Um, if you can pull it off, go to a WordCamp overseas. It is life-changing. It is... You can't, it's, hard, it's hard to imagine how different places are unless you've been there. It feels like it should be the same, but it's really not. <laughs> it's really interesting. So if you can go to another WordCamp outside the U.S., go. Toronto doesn't count. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, sir. That's an excellent question. The question for the camera is, um, is WordPress big in China and other WordCamps? And the answer is no. Um, <clears throat> I do have a contact in China, and I've been trying to get him to do an essay for HeroPress, and he has told me no repeatedly. Um, they do not use the web in China. Uh, it's just, it's too tightly restricted. It's not worthwhile. So people tend to use apps. They use WeChat, they use WhatsApp, they use custom secret browsers that get handed around on the black web, all that kind of stuff. So he said to me, no one here knows what WordPress is, no one cares, no one would use it. If I did an essay, no one would read it because no one here cares. Um, so that's a really tough nut to crack. Um, it's, I, I don't know how to get around that. You said you had another one, yeah. Sure. Devices are uh, uh, slow and unable to uh, to make contact. Having a country like Africa that is uh, making headway with communicating in that mm -hmm. is 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 there any type of country that is that is uh, kind of like a like a model for some of the other countries? I know Iran is having a difficult time. With mm -hmm. the same Right. For example, like business for Skype or uh, Teams or something like that that might not be able to utilize, you know, needs more bandwidth, but it's just the phone. Sure. How to get around that. Yep. So the question is, uh, what would be a good model country for doing bandwidth better in a continent that does not do content or uh, bandwidth well? And what kind of devices are we looking at? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, South Africa is pretty decent. Um, their history and culture has lent toward a more Western um, infrastructure. So South Africa does it pretty well. Um, a lot of the North African countries did do it well. Egypt was pretty good. But things have kind of fallen apart recently since the Arab Spring. Um, but cell phones are extraordinarily popular. Um, back in the 70s, people would ask, when are we going to wire India? When are we going to wire Africa? When are we going to get everybody wired? And we've gotten to the point now where the answer is probably going to be never because wireless is the way. Everybody has cell phones. So we're building up towers. Google has these dreams of blimps with servers that will just hover over Africa forever. Um, so cell phones are the, are the thing. Um, I want to show you something interesting. Oh, I lost it. Can I get it back? There we go.
This week's Europe Press essay came from a guy in Nigeria. And in the 90s, he built this website. Come on, there we go. He built this website using this phone. Anybody ever use cPanel? Yeah, it's a pretty common web tool. He navigated cPanel on that telephone and built websites. Um, he has a year on there. Can anybody? Can't see it here from, from here very well. What year was that? He's not very old. <laughs> oh, well. This wasn't very long ago that he built a website with that phone. Um, now, obviously, that's, that's a pretty old phone. People have Android now and iPhones and things like that. And I'm sure it's a lot easier to, to build a website. Um, <clears throat> but they're still running on 3G, 2G, you know. It's, it's pretty hard. Um, yeah, did I answer your question well enough? South Africa is a good example. These days, people are using Android phones, things like that. Yeah. When, to be able to put on a, a WordCamp like that in, in a country that is, um, has, has low bandwidth and things like that, they, it, is there a type of conferencing software that could be used All right. on the phone that they could do a, like a video chat with everyone? More than sure. That? Uh, so is there, is there video chat software they could use for a conference? Um, I don't know anything special. I, I mean, there's Google Hangouts and Skype and Zoom, things like that. Um, I don't know of anything that's particularly awesome at bandwidth that would help. Um, <coughs> on the 22nd of February, I'm going to do a presentation to the Port Harcourt meetup in Nigeria over Hangouts probably. Um, well, it's a decent-sized city in a reasonably modern country. Uh, they still have daily blackouts, but when the power's up, things are pretty good. Um, so uh, I, think, I think they suggested Hangouts specifically. So however good Google Hangouts is at that sort of thing. Um, probably a laptop. Like, I'm probably going to connect to one laptop that they'll put on a projector. And, and you know, uh, circling back to that a little bit, um, they're going to hold their meetup at a place that has internet. So they're not going to be at home or out in the street or whatever. Um, so I think it's a university. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for coming.
Come on.
Hey, 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 hey,